the film starts with structural engineer John Alan Garrity at work overlooking the plans for a building. He later goes home to his estranged wife, Alison, and their son, Nathan, who had diabetes and walks around with an insulin pump. Although things are tense between John and Alison, they do their best to stay cool for the time. The big story in the news is Clark, a comment that is supposed to be passing over the head. The Garretys are hosting a party with friends and neighbors to watch Clark go through the atmosphere. While John goes shopping for groceries, he gets a presidential alert on his phone that says he plus Nathan and Addison have been selected to relocate to a secret bunker. As he goes home, he sees military vans passing by. John goes to tell Alison, but finds the guests already there. They watch the news of a fragment of Clark as it eats the water. There was a slight tremor when John goes outside. He is hit with a massive shock wave, which pushed him to the ground. He runs back into the house to hear the news that the fragment had hit the state of Florida and the video shows the devastating impact and ensuing shockwave. The presidential alert then appears on the TV, instructing the guards to report the Air Force base for flying to the bunkers. John then gets Alison and Nathan's stuff and puts it in the back as they start to head out. Their neighbor Ed warns John that Clark is a giant cluster of fragments such as what eats Florida. As they start to drive away, another neighbor, Deborah, begs with the guy to take her daughter, but the family has to regrettably leave them behind because John knows the girl will be turned away. The guy gets close to the base, but are held back by a long line of traffic, so they must abandon their car. Unfortunately, Nathan had grabbed his blanket and now newly dropped his medication on the floor of the car. A huge crowd has gathered, demanding access onto the planes. After the family gains entrance into the base with his plants, they realize they left the medicine in the car when they can't find it in the bag. John goes out to grab it, but when Alison mentions Nathan condition to a soldier, the two are led to meet Major Brain, who informs Alison that people with conditions such as diabetes are not allowed on the plane. Although Alison begs with Brain to reconsider. But there was nothing Major Brain could do about it. Thinking John already made it on the plane, Alison tries to get them to contact him, but to no avail. When John gets back, he tries to hop on a plane after not assuming Alison and Nathan are on another plane. Another passenger notices John holding the medication and he tells John about the rule about people with conditions. John asks to be let off the plane just as the crowd breaks through the gates and tries to stop the planes. Some have guns and fire at the base workers, causing one to drop a fuel pump. John gathers everyone as they start to run towards the gates. As the fire ignites, causing the plane to explode, it's too more and killing many people. John makes it out in time and runs back to the car. Alison and Nathan find that the car was broken into. She leaves a note for John, telling him to meet them at her father's house in Lexington, Kentucky. John finds the note and follows. Alison takes Nathan to a store that is being looted to get medicine for him. Gunmen soon storm the police and open fire on several people. Alison makes her way to the front until the man stands in front of her. She pleads for Nathan's life and the man lets them go. She catches up with a woman named Judy and convinces her husband, Ralph, to drive them, but only as far as Knoxville tennis. John proceeds on foot through the city, where he comes across more looters and a view of more Clark fragments passing through the sky. He stops by a rooftop party to try and get a reception to call Alison. They talk briefly before the call is dropped again. Alison who was in a car, chats with Ralph and Judy, dropping that her family was selected but denied entrance. Ralph then appears to come up with a plan and pulls over to try and get Alison out. She fights him but is ultimately overpowered and as a rest band, left behind as Ralph and Judy kidnap Nathan. 
Alison works in despair for a while until a family in a minivan pulls over to take her to the airport as she knows that where Ralph and Judy are headed. John comes across a truck full of people heading towards Canada after the driver agrees to drop John in Lexington. He meets a young man named Colin who tells him that the plane is in Canada are heading to the bunkers that are reportedly in Greenland, even though the locations were classified. Another passenger, Lucas, antagonizes John after learning he got selected, thinking that only American born citizens should have been selected since he was Scottish. He demands the wristband from John and starts to fight him alongside his body maker. The fight causes John to sweep out to the side, leading to a crash that kills Colin. When John saw this, he left horrified. Alison runs out of the van once they are stopped by traffic heading to the airport for the rope. Ralph and Judy have reached the base where they try to pass Nathan off as they are soon with the wristbands to gain entry. Nathan tells the soldiers that he is kidnapped and he goes with the soldier while the couples are taken into custody. He is brought into a medical car right before Alison makes it there. A soldier helps her go through a few tests before she was finally reunited with Nathan. The following morning, John walks into an empty neighborhood and breaks into a house for food and water. He turns on the TV and watches news of more devastating impacts of clock fragments around the world. As well as the news of the worst of Clark, which was nicknamed the Big War, to eat Europe the next day, estimating the deaths of 70% of plant and animal life, plus more than 75 million deaths. He steals a car and makes his way to the home of Alison's father, Dale. After a while, Alison calls the house to get picked up with Nathan down the road. After returning, John then remembers what Colin told him about the planes going to Greenland and he resolves to try and make it there in time. They offer Dale a chance to go with them, but he chooses to stay in his home and accept his death since he had nothing more to lose. The Garrities live in Dale's truck and head to Canada. They get as far as upstate New York when they hear a radio report of molten debris incoming. Fireballs start raining down on cars and people. John leads Allison and Nathan to hide beneath an underpass. He even helps a man trapped in his own car to safety as they wait out the chaos. After everything settles, the family continues their trip and makes it to the railway just as the plane starts to take off. John blocks the plane with his truck until the pilot steps out to confront John. He tells the family that the plane is full, but John tells him to only take Nathan and Allison. However, Allison convinces the pilot to let all of them on board. The plane makes it to Greenland just as another fragment hits the coast and sends a shockwave that causes the plane to crash. Both pilots were dead, but the main one gets shows to John that another plane is landing nearby, meaning the bunkers may be nearby. John leads his family and other passengers towards the airbase and are led underground. As the last of Clark's fragments, which was nicknamed the big one, was about to eat very soon, the Garrity's and all other passengers on the plane all ran to the bunkers. The Garrity's embrace each other as the impact was felt. Nine months later, other stations around the world started to make contact with Greenland. The atmosphere has cleared off with radiation, allowing the survivors to step out into what she was of the world. The Garrity's joined them as they rejoiced at the sight of birds flying by.